sometimes in life you got to experience the down times when things aren't going well, uh, having to fail and, and rise again to really understand who you really are you know, as a player and as a person. Eddie is a fascinating story from rags to riches to rags and back to riches again. Coming from where I come from, you gotta have thick skin. And, and it's, it's, it's a survival of the fitness. In Bonnell, Florida, what you see is a bunch of kids who grow up in unstable environments who have no way out. You know, either dropped out of school too early or never had parents that were involved in their lives. You look up to the drug dealers that, that get the fast money on the streets and have the big gold chains and the, and the nice cars on rims. And, uh, uh, you know, those are the guys, you know, that we idolize and we want to you know, we, we be like. But in my case, you know, I was very fortunate to have a mom that was uh, very strict, who was my mom and my dad. She always told us, you know, I'm, I'm your mom and your daddy. Growing up, he was a good kid. I never had any problems not in school, not at home. He had respect for adults. He always wanted to participate in any sports. My mom was a single mom. I'm one of three, and in the summer, she put us in the summer camp program. I met these three uh, white kids uh, that played soccer, something that I never had the desire to play. In the inner city, we all want to be Michael Jordan. But uh, becoming friends with these three, three white kids, they introduced me to the game of soccer, and I fell in love with it. came home from summer camp and he was like, Ma, it's this competitive team and these boys want me to play competitive soccer. And I was like, oh, I really don't have like the money. And Bob came to me and he was like, Miss Johnson, just don't worry about it. Travel soccer is really expensive. Getting the new uniforms every year, you gotta pay to go to different tournaments across Florida. And they were able to pay for everything for me. So they kind of brought me in as the second son. Once he joined our team, we would go on trips and Yep, it would be my parents in one bed and me and him in the other bed. The biggest challenge was being courageous enough to go because it can be intimidating, you know? I mean, he was the only African-American on our team, played against very few, so he was an outsider in another world. He ran into a lot of problems with a lot of the parents once he made the team saying, how could he afford to play soccer and I was on welfare. I can remember when Ed was going away to Bradenton, and I remember sitting at the computer and writing him a letter. I told him what hopes I had for him, what hopes his community had for him, to do his best, to stick with it, how proud I was. And uh, I truly consider you like a son to me. started going great from there. Broke into the U.S. men's national team at 20 years old. Played in the World Cup in 2006. When I went to Germany, that World Cup, and the first time he stepped on the pitch, uh, it, it brought tears to my eyes, man. Here's a guy who's tearing it up in MLS. He's scoring goals for the US national team and he's going to World Cups. So some big money was thrown about and a lot of interest from Europe, which eventually sends him to Fulham in the English Premier League. The guy effectively has it made. He went there and for whatever reason, Fulham didn't feel he was the right fit. But then he starts getting loaned out. You know, he goes to Greece. You know, he goes to another second division team in, in England. Here I am coming from the MLS to go play in the Premiership. You know, it's the biggest league in the world. Everyone wants to get the Premiership. And then now the manager's saying, no, we want you to go down a league because we don't think you're ready. So for me, it was like a kind of kick in the face. I 
I played in the 2006 World Cup and, and uh, not having an opportunity to play in a second. And that was devastating. It was one of the most painful things that I think I've ever experienced. I mean, I really thought at that point his, his career might have, you know, might, might be over. The pressure for Eddie Johnson to succeed again was immense. He had to come back and prove himself all over again. You know, I think I've always had pressure. I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to go to Seattle, and I'm going to show them that, you know, this is what I can do. In he comes, scores more goals than any other sounder has scored in MLS history. Rosales switches it to the right foot, to the back post, Eddie Johnson! He was lost, and now he's found that Eddie Johnson's rebirth continues. We have a lot of different American players playing this game because it's a melting pot. Yeah. Right, right, right. But we really don't have that many inner city kids playing the game. But that's where you're going to find the drive and the ambition to succeed. Hey! And with Eddie, he's always out there at his full emotional level. He wants to prove himself. He's out to prove things. But I think that goes back to the environment that he grew up with. You either stick up for yourself or, or you're in trouble. He's born and raised, he come out the projects, so you know what could you expect? <laughs>